If indeed, there once was, as we often postulate, an incredibly capable ancient civilization, which after their mysterious demise, over the following eons, has become lost upon our planet, dependent upon the time in which this occurred, and the more which passes, one would expect to find less and less evidence to support their once existence. If this people created monumental structures, somehow effortlessly carved or built from the bedrocks and cliff faces of Earth, then these remnants would logically outlast any of the biodegradable objects left by this mysterious people, which would have long ago been consumed by entropy. These stones would be their final remaining mark upon our planet, cast in stone for many more years. These structures, we are convinced, exist all over the Earth, most attributed to civilizations within known history who were often simply incapable of completing these tasks. And the Castles of Eagle is no exception. According to academia, the Eagle Stone castles were built by Assyrians in 5000 BC. During its life, the castle would have been an extremely formidable fortress. It was surrounded by walls which have partially survived. Interestingly, excavations made in 1946 suggested that the castle might actually date back far before 5000 BC, with dates of 20,000 BC or more showing up on several occasions. A lot of local carved caves, which were once inhabited around the castle, nearly all date to this period. Could this dating be a more realistic proposition? Could Eagle Castle, an entire structure once masterfully hewn from a solid chunk of bedrock, actually be a pre-diluvium ruin? Like many of the other formidable and for their functioning lives virtually impenetrable fortresses, Eagle has been the cradle of many civilizations – Assyrians, Utarians, Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire, and even the Ottoman Empire – all exploited this once grand ancient fortress. Who built Eagle Castle? When did they build it? How did they build it? How did a civilization within our distant past manage to create such astonishing structures, either with enormous stones or out of them? They seemingly mastered the art of stone masonry at a very early time in our history. And thanks to this, their legacy lives on to this day. Osaka Castle one of the most important historical structures in Japan, having played a defining role in unifying Japan during the 16 centuries. It is a structure whose enigmatic characteristics we have covered in the past. The main tower of Osaka Castle, situated on a plot of land roughly one square kilometer in diameter, is built atop two raised platforms, supported by sheer walls of cut rock created using a technique called burdock piling. With some of these wall faces, also containing compelling precision ancient stonework, a feature we initially focused on in our previous video. However, there also exists other intriguing anomalies within the grounds of the castle, a series of stoneworks of gigantic proportions. Enormous walls, which many of you may not be aware of, rarely shared by academia. These sections were created with polygonal masonry techniques a method of advanced block building unexplained, subsequently lost to the eons. Due to their unexplained nature, these hidden features, we believe, are clear evidence of an original structure, far outdating the modern castle and indeed attested historical accounts. Yet what is undoubtedly the most striking characteristic of these surviving barriers is their size. Many of the surviving blocks, each of a unique shape, were once masterfully placed, seemingly effortlessly atop one another, with incredible precision, stones stretching far into the hundreds of tons. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering, utilizing blocks of gargantuan sizes, is also present at many other ancient sites throughout the world. It is not only indicative of a lost, advanced, highly capable civilization, but the question as to how they managed to cut, move, and eventually place such enormous weighted stones with such precision remains a baffling mystery yet to be unraveled. Furthermore, 
There not only exists astonishingly huge polygonal masonry within the grounds, but there also still exists mysterious carved stones in and around the grounds of Osaka Castle. Perplexing megalithic stones, unquestionably carved for a past purpose, which possibly, due to their immense size, are the sole surviving remnants of other ancient features, now nearly all but eroded away. As such, their past function is now unknown. Yet regardless of these unanswered questions, we maintain a hypothesis that like the many other astonishing ancient ruins found on differing continents, for example, Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, Chulap, etc., that due to these sites' characteristics, specifically the immense size of the stonework involved in their original construction, and thus their once impenetrable nature, were utilized by a later civilization, and Osaka Castle being no exception, built upon a foundation far older than modern academia would ever willingly admit to. The fact that no modern explanation exists pertaining to how these gigantic megaliths came to be placed where they are found today, in addition to an absent understanding or explanation as to how polygonal masonry was completed, especially with such enormous quarried stones, we feel is strong evidence to support our posit that the foundations of these ancient structures are far older than their current dating. Foundations which were almost definitely the work of a past highly capable civilization, responsible for all the other, as yet, unexplainable ancient wonders found around the globe. The question is, who were these ancient builders? How did they move such massive stones? Did they utilize technologies reminiscent of modern-day lifting equipment? Were all of these ancient structures built by the same governing force, with the slight variations present from location to location, only as a result of the different cultures who were responsible for the actual undertaking? Was this knowledge of highly advanced ancient building techniques shared worldwide? If this is the case, it is a strong indicator that most of what academia continues to peddle as a complete timeline of man is vastly inaccurate and missing vast chapters of past development. Where did this highly advanced group go? Why are there so many quarries and indeed unfinished ancient megaliths found all over the world, spanning as far as the notoriously remote island of Easter, all seemingly abandoned abruptly? Did this civilization fall victim to cataclysm? Or perhaps their fate was far more transcendental? Regardless of these unanswered questions regarding their final destination, we feel Osaka Castle is undoubtedly yet another example of extraordinary ancient feats of prehistoric engineering by a group we are yet to fully understand, and as such is undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many aspects of ancient ruins which can indicate a far more advanced, technologically capable constructor than are currently academically attested. Massive, seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks precisely placed within their constructions. Advanced weight-bearing architecture that could have only been understood by a civilization with a far more knowledgeable set of building strategies than those claimed as the culprit our own well-studied, more recent ancestors. Precision tool marks that could have only been left by high-rotating precision machinery, etched and worked into notoriously hard stone, stones such as granite, that thanks to its erosion resistance, still possess these clear evidential scars, left by these enigmatic machines, leaving us to ponder and academia to ignore. Mysterious alignments, often created using enormous stones that, according to the history books, were placed by groups of ancestors who simply couldn't have known these precise precision alignments, let alone worship them with such megalith stonework. Metal clamps, used the world over to latch these enormous blocks together, used by a mysterious civilization, who were somehow aware of the fact that these stones would shift as the years went on. With many of these clamps cast into place 
This hypothesis, supported by the evidence of vitrification upon the surface of the stonework, strong evidence of a civilization that had mastered the control of immense heats, reminiscent of modern-day refineries, with the rare example of a massive upart, like the giant glass Bess Shearim slab, further supporting this past mastery of extreme temperature refinement. Yet, the most notable and most numerous proof of this past lost civilization, and indeed their forgotten technology, is polygonal masonry. With some of this stonework clearly of such a great antiquity that it is slowly losing its recognizable form. One of these forgotten sites is Ori Castle, found deep within the forests of Japan. Located on Shiroyama Mountain, it was named after its supposed builder, Mitsutada Ori, who was the leader of a clan also named after him, the Ori clan. Ori and his clan originally stemmed from the Toki clan, but once expelled from their land and left to wander, Mitsutada recovered their land in 1536 and supposedly built a new castle on the mountain. However, due to the as yet unexplained polygonal masonry and also its clearly incredible age, we tend to believe that Mitsutada merely rediscovered this fortress within the forests on the mountains and used them to regain a foothold within the area, thus naming the castle after his efforts. The true age of the castle, we feel, is unknown, although we strongly suspect that it predates many of the other anomalous polygonal masonry that can be found within Japan, such as the foundations of Osaka Castle, an astonishing group of features we have covered previously. However, Due to the sheer age of the ruin of Ori Castle, the stonework has eroded to such a degree that it takes a keen eye and a few years of practice to be able to identify it as having once been the same level of precise polygonal masonry as that found elsewhere within Japan. Who built Ori Castle? Was it really abandoned mid-build as academia claims? Or was it, like we postulate? simply left to ruin, a relic of a now-forgotten civilization, left to simply erode away, eventually to a point where geology will argue it away as a mere natural formation. We find Ori Castle, and indeed the many other enigmatic sites to be found within Japan, quietly kept away from curious minds throughout the world as undoubtedly highly compelling. We recently shared the astonishing yet highly eroded ancient ruins of the Castles of Eagle. We also discussed the numerous datings which have presented themselves at the site, and the fact that this is due to such fortresses being the cradle of future civilizations, who undoubtedly moved in to exploit the already established fortresses as their own vantage points. With castles placed in such advantageous locations, it is predictable that later civilizations would either rebuild upon them or, if able, sometimes just re-inhabit them. This witnessed with many ancient sites of Peru, later claimed by the Incas as their own, or, as we have postulated in the past, the Giza Plateau, later claimed by the ancient Egyptians, or Baalbek and many other advanced ruins around Europe, later being claimed by the Romans as their own inventions. The list goes on. Ambitious claims, yet the reoccurring theme remains. None of these said civilizations were ever able to create such structures. They were simply incapable of moving or carving such enormous stones. And if they could, they seemingly forgot said knowledge and conveniently never recorded it anywhere. What happens when a site is located in a place set high within the clouds, at the top of a mountain? Built using so much stone and mortar, constructed to such remarkable standards, it stuns all who lay eyes upon it even to this day. Is it merely ignored by academia? It seems that after exploring many of these said locations, we have found that they are instead regularly yet quietly studied in depth. However, the funded individuals who are given the pleasure of exploring them 
are only required to investigate a specific history, limited to a specific, already accepted timeline of events. Usually, that being the earliest, already accepted civilization, known to have inhabiting the area always become that of the site's builders. This, regardless of the clearly advanced stonework all around them, placed high atop a mountain above the clouds, that, like so many other sites we explore, is obviously indicative of lost knowledge. These funded individuals are required to merely ignore that which will not be accepted by their peers, shall we say, encouraged, to pursue a particular criteria of historical events, regardless of whether this be complete or even true. If they do not, they risk losing their reputation, funding, and ultimately their career. Known as Takeda Castle, it is an ancient ruin of a once astonishing castle complex, and often referred to locally as the Machu Picchu of Japan, or the castle in the sky. According to academia, Takeda Castle was apparently constructed by Otikaki Mitsukaji, lord of the area in 1441. Hakamatsu Hirohide was the last lord of the castle. He fought on the side of Tokugawa Iyazu at the Battle of Sikahara in 1600. Although he served valiantly in the battle, he was accused of arson and, as a punishment, chose to commit seppuku after which the castle was abandoned. A provocative supposed sequence of events, however, we feel a rather limited and predictably spouted history. Not only is it staunchly based upon known written historical accounts, a rather safe and boring bet to place. But this also avoids having to present any compelling explanation for its construction. Who built Takeda Castle? Will we ever know? There are many theories which orbit the Apollo space missions. However, apart from the obvious moon hoax claims, there are many other baffling tales surrounding these missions surrounding not only a proof to the validity of the programs, but also a seemingly transparent approach to presumably many, although we would never believe all, of the anomalies that the American Space Agency encountered during those incredibly expensive yet highly successful missions. Watched by nearly everyone spinning around on our small globe, one very few lucky enough to travel away from like to call the blue marble. There are many unexplained images that have been snapped of the Moon by NASA, some claimed as showing nothing like that of the famous pyramid we have covered in the past, seemingly rediscovered on an image once claimed by NASA as an overexposed image. Yet there are many other anomalies and objects NASA neither confirm nor deny the existence of, yet still release said images to the world. They do not deny and equally accept that many they cannot explain. The Shard This image is a 44-time enlargement of a lunar orbiter frame coded LO384M, taken with a medium-resolution camera at a distance of at least 250 miles. It shows an object dubbed by Richard Hoagland as the Shard. Interestingly, although some have dismissed the object as a simple camera malfunction, the shard also possesses a shadow correctly aligned with the position of Saul at that time. According to Hoagland, quote, Poor resolution images, like this one of the shard, have led some to conclude it is an ephemeral outgassing event. However, the Enterprise mission enhancements reveal no spray or splatter, which would be consistent with such a conclusion. He goes on to state, the object appears to be solid, though badly battered by meteors." End quote. Above and behind the shard is the tower, another among this collection of mystifying images of apparent lunar objects. The tower has been researched and studied by many people since its discovery among NASA's images. A massive structure, calculated as being an incredible 7 miles high, this estimation clearly makes any consideration that the tower is indeed a real structural anomaly, soaring from the lunar surface a tough pill to swallow. Yet the images remain an incredibly difficult thing to explain, and the tower's cuboid feature atop just adds to this ongoing mystery, yet one of deep intrigue, is the mystery of castle. 
the name given to an object captured by the Apollo 10 astronauts during the Moon Orbit mission, codenamed AS-10-32-4822. It is of a one-mile-long object floating miles above the lunar surface, like a satellite to our satellite, that, even more amazingly, is possibly like that of what makes Saturn's rings, that being ice crystals of pure water, is apparently, according to future enhanced image study, also made from a material alike glittering glass. Apart from the reports of strange music being heard on the far side of the moon, a claim few will ever be able to confirm the truth of, this extraordinary object is something very few know of, and even less have studied. Unless more attention is given to such incredible anomalies, ones witnessed by us already, and so relatively close to our little home, we may never know what they are. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling.